See, a lot of people think that in order to make anybody miss you, you have to do no contact and they have to like you. And that's kind of true, right? But there is one thing that's missing. You need three things that's very specific. And there's one little element that a lot of people miss that really that really is what creates the wildfire. You know, love is like a love is like a fire, right? And the fire needs two things. Things to combust and oxygen, right? And a lot of people don't know what that oxygen is in this case. And a lot of us believe that it is space, which is the oxygen, and it is true. But what is it that keeps that fire alive, right? So we're going to be talking about this. And this is something that I realized when I was in my 10-day meditation retreat. And it kind of blew my mind when I came when I realized this because this happens to every single person that falls in love. Every single person always goes through these three steps, and I'm gonna tell you what that is. Okay, so let's begin with the video, man. And if you guys ever want to work with me one on one to get one on one coaching, to get life coaching, a lot of people ask me for that. You can click on the description down below where it says get a one on one phone call with me. The phone calls are private, but if you guys want a more affordable option, you could do an email coaching session, which you guys ask me an email. A question and I and I respond in the form of a video on YouTube and yo those are anonymous simply because nobody really knows where you're from if you just change things up so click on the description down below to do that or else I might have to close the channel um so look let me tell you something the first two things you need obviously is the emotion right the, the chemistry if there's no emotion like I always say the, 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 nothing that you do will solidify right? The emotion is what keeps everything together. No, the emotion is what get, is, is, is the found, is the, is the building blocks of any love that you feel towards people. Okay. Now, after that, once you have the emotion, obviously you need space. Okay. We always talk about that because one, because sometimes when we feel emotions towards people, we're not really that aware of what's going on inside of us because we're so captivated by this other person that we don't have, we never take a moment to self-reflect how we feel. We never take a moment to just unwind and relax, right? To, and allow whatever's inside of us to take root. We never do that because we're interacting, we're feeling good. And so we never allow ourselves to think of different things and notice where our minds naturally gravitate to, right? Because when we're around the other person, we do, we're not really thinking of them. They're there. And so we're in their presence and it feels good. But that doesn't, that we don't realize the love that we have for the person in that moment. It's only when we have the option to think of multiple and an infinite amount of things that we notice our minds just for some reason gravitating like 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 a magnetic field gravitating towards the thought of this person and then we say oh my god i think i like this person but the most but but the the crucial element that really solidifies things and that nobody talks about on youtube it's just one thing a narrative you need a narrative put it this way love is like a seed a seed that takes root and that and that taking of root takes time once the seed takes root, this is the most vulnerable moment in a plant. It needs it needs it because that's how it's at, that's how it accesses water and nutrients, right? So the most vulnerable period of any plant or tree is a moment when it's taking root, and that's when most plants or trees or trees die, right? And that taking of root is in the first month of most relationships. And so this moment, this vulnerable. And this makes them vulnerable. And once this happens, once the root takes once the root takes root on the ground, um, the plant becomes more independent, able to access resources from the soil and thrive as in, on its own. Right. Once so so this is the same thing with space. Once the space is created, a crucial things a crucial thing is needed, a narrative. Right. So just like a plant, it needs time to take root. And in this case, the emotions. You need to spend a lot of time with the person, not a lot of time, but you need to spend enough time with this person so that you, the idea of you takes root in their minds so that you become a normal part of their lives. You're not something new no more. You need to become a normal part of your life, of their lives. Like, a, like for example, you know, when you have a broken, a broken, a broken screen at first is uncomfortable, but the more you, you deal, the more you use your phone with a broken screen, the more normal it becomes to the point that other people don't, you don't notice you have a broken screen, but other people do, right? 
that's what I'm talking about. The habitualization and an addiction. You call this the addiction, the addicting, the addiction process. The habitualizing or um, gaining tolerance for that substance, right? When you gain tolerance for that substance, that's when your body becomes dependent, right? And so in this case, the plant becomes dependent on the ground, and so it could thrive on its own. But the problem that we have with that is that we never people either pull away too soon or the emotions are not intense enough. Right. And you know that where if you do this process and you, you could know that the emotions aren't intense enough by the way they react to you, by the way they react to you pulling away. Right. But most importantly, how they react to the narrative. Let's talk about the narrative. This is very powerful. You know, humans always are trying to rationalize their decision making. Right. Humans are very superstitious creatures. Um, if you notice baseball players, they believe that if they tap their legs one, three times and they'll hit a home run, or if they basketball players, before they hit free throws, they have their own routine. They go like that, shoot, or even some go like that, shoot. Humans are superstitious. And humans believe in narratives a lot. And if you notice people who are in love, they all have a narrative, right? They all have almost like a, oh, this is wrong. They all have a superstition about their relationship. What does that mean? When I'm in love with someone, um, you'll notice that you'll start looking for little things that connects you guys. Oh my God, we met on the full moon. Or, oh my God, we look alike. We're meant to be together. Or, oh my God, we're part of the same religion. Or, oh, we love to meditate. You look for any compatibility, any thing that, that, that on paper is good and you exaggerate that quality. And, the, and, and, and there are some narratives that are stronger than others. For example, spirituality and religion and, 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 and trying to assert that there's a higher purpose to this relationship is the most powerful kind, right? Where you say, oh, this, um, we met, our, we are soulmates, right? Or we are twin flames, right? Or you are my shadow side, or we knew each other in our past lives. When somebody doesn't love you and you tell that shit to them, they'll be like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? No, we, we, not, we did not meet in our past lives. We're not, to, we're, we're not like that. When somebody loves you, they'll look for anything. Oh my God, your birthday is the same as, as mine, but if you add two plus two equals four, that equals the amount of sisters that I have, but also that's the same month that I was born in. People, when they're in love, they make those types of connections. For example, maybe you're dating someone and you guys both have the same birthday, right? People who are in love will find that fascinating and will see a higher purpose to you being together. People who are not in love will not even think about the, the fact that you guys may have the same birthday. And it doesn't add to it. But what happens is that when you like someone, the emotions will create links, unnecessary links in different places to create almost like a cult-like narrative between the two of you guys. But you need a narrative, right? Where you guys say we're meant to be together. God brought us together, right? Or or you're my, you, 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 uh, another example could be um, you came at the right time right uh, or or i'm healing and now you're here right all you have to do with somebody that actually likes you make connections it may not seem that important but i can promise you if somebody loves you they will use those little connections like numerology astrology religion they will use those connections and they will use that almost like wind to spread the fire that's really what happens a lot right but when you're not in love, what you'll know, when they're not in love, what you'll notice is that that doesn't happen. So it's not just about making sure that they like you back and also creating space. You also have to create a narrative. And that narrative, you could just observe what are the things you got, that you guys have in common, you know, and, and, and spiritualize the relationship because this is what naturally happens when people fall in love, right? So let's, this is what I wrote. Um, when you're in love, you create a narrative. Give them a narrative. But when you're not in love, no matter what you do, it won't add to the feeling. The feelings create the narrative. And that narrative is the mental movie they see of you. That narrative is 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 is, is like the the, the, the movie storyline. And everyone's love life is like a movie. And you wanna give them a very compelling movie with a lot of with a lot of um um unprecedented connections. And all you have to do is point them out. That's all. Oh, we're both Virgos, or we're both compatible. Um, um, this or that, right? The the person might not believe in, in any of that kind of stuff, right? But it, observe if they're not into that type of like religion or spirituality. Find anything, 
oh my god we look alike oh my god we're perfect matches oh my like we we, we are good looking we will have good looking kids as an example of that as long as you're not needy as long as you're not needy and as long as you say you don't want a relationship you can say that and you can get away with it and that and and it was funny is that a girl did that to me once where she told me oh my god we will have good looking kids and i know she wasn't that into me but it kind of got into my head i'm like yeah we would have good looking kids you know and, and then i just started thinking about it. i'm like yeah and then I realized I started having a, me a, a mental movie of having kids with her. And then and, and that narrative it, it enhanced the feeling that I have for her. Ladies and gentlemen, narratives are powerful, you know, and narratives are things that people don't think about. But you have to understand humans are superstitious. Humans are, it, this is what religions are made of. They're made of narratives of what happened and narratives to explain the unexplainable. Right. And humans do believe that. And once they believe in a narrative, everything, everything that happens, the emotions will add on to the narrative like a black hole um, 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 attracting, attracting matter. And, it, and, it, and it, 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 it creates a stronger gravitational f field. And that narrative is your life movie. That narrative is your relationship. That narrative is what's going to drive you to stay with this person even if they're toxic. It's what's going to drive you to stay with this person even if they're not the perfect match. Because the narrative only has a the narrative have ha, the narrative has a bias. And that bias is to keep you with that person. An example is that people who say, "Oh, I smoke crack for energy." Or I smoke weed because as an example, right? I smoke weed because it makes it, it makes me more creative. No, it doesn't. Church, the studies show it doesn't make you more creative. Or um, I do heroin because I, it keeps me connected with my friends. I do Molly because uh, it, it, it makes partying so much fun. I do this because every drug addict will get will have a narrative, or better yet, will have a rationalization as to their behavior. Now you have to understand is that this happens because our brains are wired to seek patterns and meanings. Right. Um, and creating narratives helps us make sense of our emotions and experiences. And, also, and it also enhances. Right. But also people could use it to manipulate it. Right. If you give them a, diff a different narrative, um, it, it could go on the other in the opposite direction. Right. Um, it's a way to cultivate a sense of connection and belonging. Right. And this is how it's done, people. Um, it, without a narrative, it, 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 the emotions that they feel will be fickled. And it'll fade away over time, right? Um, and that's why, for example, couples who go through a lot of breakups, couples who go through a lot of hardship together, they create a narrative of resilience where we've been through all of this and she is he is still with me. That's a positive narrative um, where you guys been through battles together, where you guys helped each other over time. Um, you helped me become a better uh, musician. You helped me become a better father, right? And those narratives, the the, the victories, the, the 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 positive experiences you guys had, will enhance the feelings you guys have for each other. Like in war, right? Um, if you're a good general, you want to give your troops little victories at first to increase morale. This they call that the group myth, right? A team without a group myth hasn't really solidified strong morale in the in the war so the best way to do that is, is to find easy victories similar to how boxing if you have a boxing prodigy you give them easy victories to hype them up but also give them a narrative of winning and give them the confidence this narrative in this case is overcoming obstacles is is going through that first year second year and actually and actually celebrating it creating a narrative saying how you helped me with this how you helped me with that and all of those things will enhance and will give them a more it will, it will like add to the black hole to to create more of that emotion narratives people narratives that's what kids have with parents right when they think of you they have a narrative of how their their childhood was and who you represent in their lives and it's truly a powerful thing, people. Um, so you have emotion, you have space, but the most important, not the most important, but it's, it's what binds it all together. It's the narrative. It's what will keep the relationship alive for a long period of time, people. All right. Anyways, um, um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, and and it, it's, it's one of those epiphanies that I have from time to time that I find really fascinating. And I think you guys will really like. If you guys want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, go to myfortraction.org. And I'll see you guys next time. All right, guys. We're going to have a brief intermission so that I can tell you guys about our new bundle that we're doing. Where you guys can purchase all of my courses. 
and get it at a discount. So this bundle is pretty much um, the bundle where you could just buy all of my courses. You could buy um, Nice Guy, which is a training course on how to come across more assertive, how to come across more confident, um, how to not give off Nice Guy vibes. You guys can get access to Dark Game, um, which is my folk dating course on how to meet women in different scenarios, how to attract women, how to make sure you don't come across as creepy, and essentially how to act like a man and not act like a doofus, to be quite honest with you. Um, and you get all of these bonuses, which is the bonuses of Dark Game, the bonuses of Practical Mastery, uh, which is about how to master a skill, Social Mastery, which is how to master your social life, and the Laws of Human Nature, which is a book club video that I had dissecting Robert Greene's book. You, all of this is naturally at around 238, 200, no, naturally is at $346, but you guys can purchase this bundle and get it at, what, what's the price again? Uh, get it at um, two. 238 pretty much um so you guys can purchase it right now um it's a money money back 30 day money back guarantee uh it's a good way to rather than just buying them individually and paying extra you guys can just purchase everything at a discount price now the only thing i don't like is the fact that i'm giving you a lot of information at the same time that makes me kind of scared because a lot of times people don't do the things that i teach when i when you get too much information but I've gotten too many requests to do this, so I'm just satisfying you guys purchase it right now by clicking on the description down below where it says purchase the bundle. All right, let's continue with the video.